Hey, hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook Live every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I am your host, Dan Z. Let me get that little, there we go. Boom. There's a Coffee with Kenobi logo. And who is it? Me, Dan Z. All right. It's good to have you here tonight with me talking some Star Wars. Tonight, we're going to talk about your top five favorite Ahsoka Tano moments. That is going to be, well, it's not going to be easy, is it? I mean, Ahsoka Tano is awesome. There are a lot of great Ahsoka Tano memories and stories and sequences and fight scenes and interactions. So much cool stuff. Let's say hello to our friends. Hello, Alex. Hello, Mason. Hey, Wes. He says he always gets a good feeling when he hears Steve Turok's music. Come on. Me too, man. I'm so glad. Thanks for giving props to Steve. He's a, he's an awesome guy. Way back when we started the show, we had him on and he is a very cool guy, big Star Wars fan. Joshua, welcome to the show, man. Good to have you back. Merry, happy, snowy Monday to you. We had a pretty snowy Sunday, but it's getting a little bit better now. Ian says, I'm, hi friends, I've missed you the past few weeks. Good to be back on CWK Monday. It's great to have you on the show with us, buddy. Awesome. Minta, this is the way it's CWK Day, and I know you're excited. Minta can say it's her top five favorite Ahsoka Tano moments, so I'm sure you've got quite a list. Sean, hello, Sean. Uh, Sean loves Ahsoka. His whole family loves Ahsoka. We all love Ahsoka. Daniel, good evening to you as well. All right, we've got our usual friends here from the CWK Alliance and members of Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook page and CWK Cafe, wherever you're joining us from. Welcome, welcome, whether it's here or whether you're listening to the audio version of the show on our podcast feed or our Instagram page or on the recap on YouTube. Welcome to the show. All right. Josh says, I'm actually showing my dad the best stuff for Clone Wars because he's never seen it before. And just they were watching the season five Ahsoka arc, which undoubtedly is going to come up very, very soon. Okay, good deal. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. Yes, this week, what is brewing in the world of Star Wars? Well, there was pretty cool stuff that happened, I would say. We got, uh, last Friday, Hasbro had a one of their big reveals that they do, Hasbro Pulse. And there was a ton of new Hasbro merchandise. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is out there. So firstly... We have, uh, of course, this is Black Series stuff. The Black Series is what drives the Hasbro Star Wars train pretty much because it's such a popular line and it's got such great stuff. So these are the carded Phantom Menace figures. You'll notice that it's got the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm logo. We saw that about, I guess, a few months ago, but now it's starting to show up on merchandise. I haven't actually seen anything in stores with the logo on it, but I know it is certainly out there. There's no doubt about that. So these are the Black Series figures. On the left, we've got Jar Jar Binks. On the right, we've got Qui-Gon Jinn. And the likeness of, again, the likeness of the actors, like of Liam Neeson, for example, are absolutely insanely stunning. I mean, just look, it looks just like Liam Neeson. The, the technology they're using is really, really impressive. Uh, let's see. Uh, Josh says, they look awesome. Still need to pick up the Black Series archives. Ron, I saw that one out there. Mason said that something happened with the feed. Is anyone else noticing a problem? It looks good on my end, but that doesn't always mean anything. Uh, Mita says, these figures take me back. I feel old. Well, you know what? I very much remember getting these three and three quarter inch figures back in the day. The only complaint I've heard about the Black Series figures that are carded like this is that you can't open them up like the, the normal boxed ones. But I think that's why they're so highly collectible too, because you pretty much keep them sealed. Daniel says he loves them all packages of design. Me too. That's the great design from episode one, three and three quarter inch figures from 1999. Yes, Ian says, gotta love that photo real technology. Exactly. It's it's incredible. We also have on the left Samuel Jackson as Mace Windu. On the right is a battle droid. So those are really, really cool. Uh, Mason, I'm sorry I can't see anything. Maybe mommy can help you. Uh, that's so weird, but we will definitely get that fixed for you, pal. So we've got Mace Windu, and we've got the Belder. Can everyone else see what's going on, hopefully? 
Let me know if you can't, and I will happily rewind and make that happen because I want you to see these beautiful images that we have from Hasbro. Okay, so again, the battle droids. Uh, I love I love the battle droids. I think they're fun. I think they're funny. I've talked about that many times. Mason and I have had a lot of fun with them over the years, and now uh, with you know the photorealism that we see here. There we go. Okay, everybody can see it. Okay, that's good. Brian can see it. Good. Mary, I'll go here. Hope it works out. Mace. Yep. If not, Mace, we'll show you. The, I'll show the original, buddy. I will definitely show you the original. It might be something wrong with my laptop. Quite honestly. All right. So here we have vintage line. This has the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm up in the top left corner, and we've got the ATS tree driver. We've got Paplu. Paplu. We've got. Uh, Princess Leia from Endor. These are again the three and three quarter inch figures. Uh, Mason, you know what? If you want to run downstairs, um, I will help you. I will help you during the show. I will help you figure the, figure fix the Facebook feed, buddy. No problem. All right. So these are the three and three quarter inch vintage figures. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe these are Walmart exclusives, which can be, of course, something of a mixed blessing. Uh, we know we've all had sort of challenges with Walmart over the years. Uh, they have great products, great stuff, but sometimes they're hard to kind of pin down their actual collectibles themselves. Uh, Josh is not a big three and three quarter inch scale person. He likes the six inch, but these are pretty cool. Minta says she has to do some early birthday shopping. Yes, you should. And when is your birthday, Minta? Let us know so we can wish you a happy birthday. But I, I prefer the three and three quarter inch figures just because of space and because they harken back to when I the ones I got when I was a kid. Of course, but you know, we've all got our things we gravitate towards. There's a lot of fun stuff out there for sure. All right, now these to me, yes, sadly, Walmart does love to cancel pre orders. In fact, I got an email from Walmart right before the show about my Cobra Fang helicopter saying that it's going to be delayed. So that dance continues. Hopefully, it will all work out. So these to me are the home runs of the entire thing because I love the three and three quarter inch line. And, of course, that character on the left is really prominent for today, naturally. And then we've got, not only is Ahsoka Tano, this is from the Clone Wars arc at the end of the series, but we've got Darth Maul with the robotic legs and the new costume. And they are so cool. These are three and three quarter inch. Murray pre-ordered hers from Hasbro. I got mine from Amazon. And very fired up, man. I mean, these are these couldn't be any cooler looking, I think. Ian says, space, the greatest challenge for collectors everywhere, closely followed by dust. This is very true. This is very true. I know, Wes, aren't these amazing? Minta agrees. For sure. Mason, come on in, buddy. So they are, they're tremendously cool. Uh, even if these are three and three quarter, I might have to buy them. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, the sculpting is just so great. I'm, I'm looking to talk to Hasbro actually pretty soon and looking forward to what they're going to tell me about what's going on with their collectibles and all the fun things that are going to happen with them for sure. All right. So after these, I hate to even fast forward because these are so cool, especially the design, the close-ups of Ahsoka's lightsabers. And look at how she even holds the one backwards. I think that's so cool. All right. These are black to back to the black series. These are reminiscent of the Kenner line, obviously as far as the card backs go, but this is obviously new sculpts. These are not, uh, larger versions of the Kenner line. Oh gosh, that would be super cool. Oh, Dave. Hey, welcome, Dave. Dave says he doesn't buy a lot of three and three quarter, but he ordered those two. Yeah, they're great, man. They're so cool. So we've got Ahsoka. Yeah, Ahsoka's face. The design is incredible. So we got Greedo on the left. We've got the Jawa on the right with the cloth cape. Again, these are these. I don't know. I mean, Dave, you would know this way better than I would or, or Ian as well or a lot of you. But are these new figures or are these just repackages with the nice Kenner back? I'm actually not sure. If you know, please weigh in and we will certainly share it here on the show. But that is these two. And then last but not least, we've got Ben, Obi-Wan Kenobi on the left. I really like that one because I like the design of the cloak and his tunic around the front. And of course, it's got that great Kenner background of, of Sir Alec Guinness. I've always loved that picture of Sir Alec Guinness. And on the right, we've got um, an elite squad trooper. These are stormtroopers that will be featured in the Bad Batch. So that's pretty cool to see them as well. Uh, Dave says, repainted with Kenner. 
uh, back, I believe. Okay. They are repacked, but Kenobi has a new photo deco. Oh, okay. So there, there is some newness to them. Thank you, Brian. I knew Brian would know about that as well. Okay, those are, those are the big reveals from Hasbro. So pretty cool, I think. I think everybody was pretty fired up about them. I personally, while I enjoyed them, I was hoping to see more uh more of nor more new excuse me retro figures because i'm such a big fan of the retro figures i know we've talked about this before but i've got the retro figures the empire strikes back one here and over there which you can't see and i've got all the new hope ones plus the ones from the exclusive board games so as soon as we get those mandalorian ones i'm putting them over here i gotta i gotta remake my video my intro because i Got so many things I've changed since that classic intro we've been using for Facebook Live. Plastic cape for Ben is a nice touch. Totally agree. Totally agree, Dave. Thank you. Uh, Josh says the clone trooper is so awesome. Plus, it gets us into some new info for the Bad Batch. Can't wait for that. Exactly. And it's cool that we're going to see stuff from the Bad Batch even before we get to see the, uh, the show. And Josh says that's what he's most excited for. That's fair. A lot of people are very fired up for that. Dave was excited for Greedo. I need one to unbox. Yeah, that see that that's a pretty valid thing. Ian says more Mando. We can never get enough Mando, right? That's correct. I totally agree. And I, as you probably saw, they're going to start filming season three of The Mandalorian in April. So that's pretty cool. Just knowing that they're going to be working on that pretty soon is very exciting stuff. All right, it's time to jump into our top fives. Now I have a feeling. Well, I'm pretty good about changing these categories and updating things on my end. I think I forgot to update the category, so let's see. Yeah, this is not top five Yoda moments, so I'm going to fix that. There is a background of my lovely family, so now you can see what my my desktops look like. Here's how organized I am. Where is this week's show? Ta-da! There we go. Top five Ahsoka Tano moments. One day after my birthday, which is Easter Sunday this year. Oh, wow. You know, what a great... What a great day to have a birthday. That's pretty cool. I love that. All right. Well, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and jump into our top five Ahsoka Tano moments. So these, of course, were very challenging. And I think the most challenging thing for me was that usually I have a very clear top one and then the other just kind of fill in as, as you know, it happens. But for this, well legitimately all five of my top five could be my number one i really had to kind of rock paper scissors to see which one would be my top one because they're all there's some great ahsoka moments it's impossible to narrow down your top five favorite ahsoka moments because there are so many i will say that for me i just kind of did stuff that jumped out at me when i first saw these particular scenes for the very first time it looks like your top fives are coming in i'm going to give you my number five first my number five is Ahsoka versus the Inquisitors. Early on in season two, um, the seventh sister and the fifth brother are chasing down Ezra and he's holding a baby Rodian who is force sensitive and they're running. And this whole episode is about how scary these Inquisitors are chasing them all over. I forget the planet they were on. I don't think it was Lothal. I, I really can't remember. But at the end, Ahsoka shows up and takes these two Inquisitors out like they are nothing. And it's so cool. I was so fired up. I think it was the first time we'd really seen Ahsoka in action like this since the Clone Wars. So it was tremendous. It was tremendous. All right, let's see what everybody else has. Number five for Ian. Talking with Grogu. Watching the two form an instant bond. We were reminded about her innate goodness and connection to the light. Wonderful. Mean to season three arc when Ahsoka and fellow Padawans were evading the Trandosians. Showed how much she had grown throughout the Clone Wars and she even met Chewbacca. Oh, you know what? I haven't seen that arc. Since it first aired, that's a good one. I'll have to revisit that one, Mita. Number five uh, for Mary. Coming down the ladder on Rebels, revealing she is Fulcrum. I love that one. That's going to come up on my list pretty soon. Aaron, Aaron, welcome to the show. Aaron says, number five, leaving the Jedi Order. I know that one's going to come up as well. Dave says, what Aaron said. Yes, for sure. Number five for Ross. Ross, hello, buddy. He says, Fulcrum, Fulcrum revealed... Fire Across the Galaxy, Season 1, Episode 15 of Star Wars Rebels. Ahsoka climbed down the ladder and showed that in, and a show that interests me became an all-time favorite. Yep, I love that sequence as well. Mason's number five, let me pull it up here. Mason's number five is when Ahsoka says in the, in the 
towards the end of the season or the series finale of Clone Wars when she says, I am one with the Force and the Force is with me. That was pretty cool because it was that connection to Rogue One and just that idea of that sort of a chant or a, or a mantra uh, that connects you to the Force, which was great. All right. Number five for Daniel is communicating with Grogu. I, uh, that almost made my top five, but it didn't. Uh, Josh says, all of his were with Ashley. Rosario was great, but Ashley is just so good. Fair enough. His number five, Trace and Rafa. Interesting to see her without the Jedi. We've seen her in Rebels, but she was basically a wiser Jedi and in the Siege of Mandalore. She has her lightsabers and the clones, but in this, she doesn't have any of that. Also interesting to see the common person's view of the Jedi. Oh, well said. I'm I'm glad to see that some love for the, the Trace and Rafa arc because I feel like when it aired, not everybody necessarily bought into that one as much. I love that one, but it did take a little bit of uh, a time. But then once I was hooked, I was hooked. And any time you see Ahsoka is great. Okay, very good. Number four. Number four of our top five moments, favorite moments of Ahsoka. For me, I just put versus Vader. She fights Vader in Twilight of the Apprentice. It's obviously very, very powerful, very intense, very exciting. But for me, I just put just that, I don't know why it wasn't higher on my list. Well, I guess because you'll see the other ones I'm going to say. But her fighting Vader is something we never thought we would see, never thought it was possible. And then when it happened, it very much blew our minds. And it was very scary because we don't want anything to happen to Ahsoka. And obviously Vader is Vader. But it was very, very intense, very, very exciting. And it was cool that Ahsoka very much gave Vader all that he could handle, maybe more than anybody we'd ever really seen. So that was pretty neat. All right, let's see what other people have. Number four for Minta, Ahsoka versus Inquisitor. She proved she hasn't missed a beat, even using her abilities to turn off their lightsabers. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That was awesome. Number four for Ian, race you to the surface. Anyone who doubts that animation can be breathtakingly awesome needs to watch this absolutely epic sequence. It is. It is epic. And it is going to show up on my list. Usually I don't reveal that stuff, but I mean, I can't. I can't hide it. It's just so good. Aaron's number four, fighting with the magistrate in the Mandalorian. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Number four for Ross, Ahsoka versus Vader. And for the slightest moment, bringing out Anakin. Yes, and that was great, that, that sound mix of putting James Earl Jones and Matt Lanter's voices in there. Josh, uh, Ahsoka versus Inquisitors, need I say more? She even got a mall shot, twin doors, etc. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. How fun. Uh, Mary said, number four, walking away from the Jedi Order, the interaction between her and Anakin, and then just walking away as Anakin watched her. That was very, very powerful. Number four for Daniel Fulcrum reveal goosebump moment. Yes, yes. And then Mary uh, Mason's number four is the same as yours. Ahsoka leaving the Order, leaving the Jedi Order. That whole arc, powerful. We had to re kind of refresh our memories on the fact that who actually was behind framing Ahsoka. Anybody remember? You remember what? Uh, Padawan did that. It was Barris Afi. She was good friends with Ahsoka. And then she very much lost her way and became uh, a red lightsaber wielding, well, enemy. I, I don't want to call her a Jedi. I don't want to call her a Sith. But uh, she was, she really lost her way. We don't. I don't know that we really heard much from about her since then, huh? Dave says when Ahsoka fights Vader, it just feels so. Anakin, I'm sure they designed it that way. Loved it. I agree. It was brilliant. Dave Filoni at his absolute finest. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and jump into our number three of our favorite Ahsoka Tano moments. Number three, the Fulcrum reveal. A lot of you have said it already, but I, it was very high on my list because when she first was revealed, I was floored. I was stunned, jaw drop, kind of a thing. The great stuff that Star Wars does for so many of us is it gives you that punch in the gut of awesome is what I like to call it. And she shows up. We realize that she's the one who's been masterminding the whole thing. And you're just happy to have her back. You're just very happy to have her back. Because that was the first time we'd seen her since she left the Jedi Order. And then, of course, Clone Wars was canceled. And then we didn't know what was going to happen. And they announced they're going to have Rebels. And a lot of people had a hard time with that transition. But it obviously worked out very, very beautifully. Because we actually got to finally say goodbye to some of these characters. And got to experience the Clone Wars really in incredible ways. 
All right, three for Ian, the decision to walk away literally from the Jedi Order, forging a new path and destiny for herself. Number three for Ross, race you to the surface. Excuse me, Ahsoka to Rex in season seven, episode nine of Clone Wars. Culminates with a landing in the poster pose of the giveaway from Celebration Chicago. That's right. That is right. I just brought that to my classroom, actually. Number three, for me to the Mandalore arc, you could see she had become a wiser Jedi after leaving the temple. Even when she fought Maul, she was able to hold her ground and not give into temptation to join him to bring down Sidious. And even in the end of the series, she had still had high respect for the fallen clone troopers. Yeah, that I think that sort of encapsulates uh, how good Ahsoka is internally. I mean, just a good call on bringing that up because she she didn't take any joy in that even though they were enemies, they couldn't help themselves or she didn't know where she could. Oh, no, I think she, no, she knew. She experienced it, unfortunately, in a very, very realistic way. So that was very powerful and effective. Again, her pathos is just one of the things that makes her a top tier character, in my opinion. Josh says, leaving the Jedi Order, I feel like I would get kicked out of the Star Wars fan community if I didn't mention it. <laughs> In all seriousness, great for episodes, very powerful and emotional. Makes you wonder what would have happened if Anakin, if she had been there. Yeah, I know. I've thought about that a lot, too. I actually don't have that on mine. Like I said, you could easily... There's so many good ones. It's just... It's impossible. This one is another one is impossible. Which is great, because it means we've got so many great characters and so many great moments. Mary says, Duel with Vader, and then the World Between Worlds addition to that duel with Ezra pulling her through the door. Her, her help to Ezra during that experience... Yeah, that's so good. And as we know from Rosario Dawson's version of Ahsoka, the belt buckle is the little portal, the World Between Worlds portal. So that's neat. Aaron laying down her saber in Season 7. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Daniel, number three, her live-action Mando episode in that jaw-dropping op op action opening scene. I kind of feel like I need to watch that episode again just because there's so many cool stuff that happened in that one. Good. I love it. All right, Mason's number three is her Mandalorian debut. Like a lot of you have been mentioning, her showing up as a live-action character was just really exciting. Uh, unexpected, but also very expected because of the internet and the interweb sometimes spoiling things for us. But that's going to happen. And for some people, it doesn't impact their enjoyment of, the, of that at all, which I think is great. I think that's great. So that was Mason's number three. Okay, let's go into number two. Number two of our top five favorite Ahsoka Tano moments. For me, uh, the Mandalore landing, which, and I called it that, but other people have been calling it, you know, race you to the surface. I That sequence is just so good. It easily could have been um, my number one. Uh, you'll see what my number one is here in a second. But that landing and just the power of the animation was spectacular the thrill of just seeing what she could do, her being so free and so powerful and enabled and kind of cool that she got to work with Anakin and Obi-Wan again in the Jedi Council, albeit under different terms. This is the Ahsoka moment I think that we wanted, that we were worried we were never going to see when Clone Wars was originally canceled. So see it played out like that, her coming back to the Order to help them, but for her own reasons, but of course they were still altruistic reasons, still just so good one of my top five moments in star wars period just so good all right let's see number two for me to the fulcrum reveal when she appeared at the end of the first season i got chills and tears of joy knowing she was alive and well yes same here it was great josh said excited for the show i have a feeling it's the force let's face it the throne will be a big bad in that oh in the ahsoka series yep i think so too ian not a specific moment but the overall dynamic between ahsoka and anakin from sniffs on it adds so much richness to Star Wars lore and makes Anakin's transformation into Vader all the more heartbreaking. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Ross brought out Ahsoka's E.K. Johnston novel, the young adult novel by E.K. Johnston, all of it. I'm glad you liked it, man. That was that was a big one. There's some cool things in there that show how she gets her white lightsabers, which I think is a standout too. Mary's number two, reunion with Rex and Rebels, especially after we see what happens at the end of season seven. Makes that scene even more special. Man, that would have been an honorable mention. Good call, Mary. Very good call. Number two for Daniel, her duel with Vader slash Sky Guy. Ooh, definitely not Sky Guy then, is he? That's that's good. Too soon, Daniel. Too soon, buddy. <laughs> A great moment. Joshua, World Between Worlds, very cool and mystical 
additions to the lore are very powerful and interesting to see Ezra saving her, then Ezra's conflict to save Kanan and Ahsoka, explaining why he can't. Yes, very good. Aaron's number two duel with Vader, opening scene of the Jedi episode could easily be here, but honestly, feel the animation still trumps all that, so that was good in The Mandalorian. Fair enough. I like it. Good job, Aaron. Good call. Number two for Mason is the same as mine, the, the Mandalorian, the land on the planet Mandalore, ratio to the ratio to the surface. I mean, really, like I said, it just it just doesn't get much better. All right, number one. Number one favorite Ahsoka Tano, Tano moment for me is a world between worlds. When I got that was one that I got to see kind of early. Not kind of early, I got to see it a couple days early. And when I saw it, I I was like screamed here kind of oh my gosh i couldn't believe that ahsoka was back how she came back the implications for the force it was just that was just a huge week uh of star wars I, they asked me to write about it for starwars.com which i gladly did knowing that ahsoka was there and for a couple days i couldn't say anything because i had to agree of course not to spoil anything and then when it finally came out i could not wait to share with tom at school and then with everybody how exciting that was how much that meant to me just to see ahsoka back Again, they have this stuff with the circle where she disappears. And you never know when she's coming back, and then she does, and it just blows you away. Absolutely blows you away. That's why she's such one of the reasons she's such a great character. The way that they've been able to slowly give us more and more Ahsoka over time, and not oversaturate, which is great. Let's see. Uh, number one for Ian, saving Rex, the Clone Wars slash reuniting with Rex Rebels, the relationship between these two is one of my favorite in all of Star Wars. I'm glad. That's really cool. Number one for Minta was a tie. She couldn't choose. First is Ahsoka's live action debut. She says, I cheered the moment she appeared and her interaction with Grogu was heartwarming. Second, Vader versus Ahsoka was an incredible battle. Even when she said, I am no Jedi at the same time though, it was heartbreaking, but let me get that back. But she knew what she had to do. I don't think anyone would fault you for either. Those, those are both really good. Uh, on my list for Reed, wanted to get through Thrawn and the High Republic first. And, you know, I would get through the High Republic and Thrawn first, personally. I didn't love the Ahsoka novel. I didn't dislike it, and I'm glad that Ross liked it, and I'm sure Ross could convince me otherwise. But I feel like it was a slow burn. Once it got going, though, it was really good. I will say that. Number one for Ross, Rosario Dawson igniting the White Blades, bringing Ahsoka to live action for the first time. Ashley will always be Ahsoka to me, but this was magical. A, a fair assessment and well said, Ross. I, I love it. Number one with Daniel is her duel with Darth Maul, which, by the way, is Mason's. Mason's number one, along with you, Daniel, is her duel with Darth Maul, which is spectacular. Aaron also, duel with Maul. I think it's actually my favorite scene from Star Wars. Oh, that's cool. And plus, it was that motion capture, too. Wes said, I love the Order 66 episodes of Season 7. I watched those mixed in with Revenge of the Sith. I would stop Revenge of the Sith when it reached Order 66 in the film, then watch those Clone Wars episodes and back to Revenge of the Sith. That is a fun way to watch it. Ooh, I like that. Mason, we should try that, dude. That's a good idea. That is a really good idea. Mean to honorable mention, Rex and Ahsoka reunion. This brought a big smile to my face, and once more, I cried tears of joy. Number one for Mary, the ending of Season 7 from the first hollow message with Anakin and Obi-Wan, her fight with Maul, Dealing with Order 66 to the scene with her standing at the clone's graves, dropping her lightsabers. Yeah, that's such a good four-part arc. Siege of Mandalore in Order 66. Do I really need an explanation? Great action, great visuals, great acting, great emotional moments. Probably my favorite arc in all of Clone Wars. Very good. Uh, Josh says he wasn't a big fan of the Ahsoka novel. Yeah, it just it wasn't one of my favorites. I mean, it wasn't. There was nothing wrong with it, but it took a while for to kind of light for me. But again, if uh, Ross, if you want to convince us otherwise, I'd be more than happy to hear it. Uh, maybe you can explain it to me sometime with the cantina uh, at Galaxy's Edge. How about that? Let's do that. All right. So what is going to be next week's top five? I will say I changed my topic for next week three separate times. But after talking to Mason, we felt like it was a natural. You thought this week was hard? You thought any top fives were hard? How about this? Top five Anakin Skywalker moments. I can just hear it now. What? What? How is that even fair? Well, it isn't fair. But it is going to be fun. I mean, you've got, of course, the movies. And you've got a ton of stuff from the Clone Wars. There's, you know, so many seasons of the Clone Wars. So, my goodness. 
Are you kidding me? That is not going to be easy at all. And plus, you've got Anakin stuff from the books, from the comics. I mean, it is going to be really, really difficult. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be great, great fun. Okay. So let's see. What do we want to do now? I think we should move on uh, to Ask Dan Z. But again, next week is going to be your top five favorite Anakin Skywalker moments. Josh has narrowed down to Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith. That's still insanely broad. Yes, Mason's with me. <laughs> no! <laughs> I love when you do that, Mason. It makes me laugh. Mita says, how dare you? There's so much to choose from. I know. I know. I guess we could say top five Anakin moments from the movies and top five Anakin moments from Clone Wars. But that's... No, nah, we're just going to do it. We're going to do it. I have faith in us. Mary says, sand. Hates sand. Well, okay. Don't give away all of your, of your top fives, Mary. Just kidding. So Josh forgot about the comics and novels. It's going to be way harder. It's going to be way harder. So you have a week to watch the Clone Wars again. That's right. There's your homework, Karen. Best homework ever. Watch all of the Clone Wars. There's no way. I mean, even if you watch again, there's so many, like, the arc where he flees, he um, has to free the slavers or free the slaves. Um, the Rico Hardin arc has some good Anakin moments. I mean, it all does. I mean, it's, it's really good stuff. So, eek. I don't know. I almost feel like I should apologize, but no, it'll be fun. You know, be a critical thinker, be intellectually honest, really focus down to what makes Anakin tick for you, those things that stand out for you, and it's going to be fantastic. I have nothing but faith in all of you. So let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z. Now, there's so many fun things I want to share with you, and, and I certainly will in due time when, when everything is, all the stars align, so to speak. But in the meantime, ask me anything you want about Star Wars, about the podcast, about different things going on. Um, I will say that this week we are recording a top five spoiler-free things we love about, the, about Light of the Jedi and the High Republic, so that's going to be fun. Speaking of fun, there are a bunch of fun things that I haven't mentioned yet. This week on Coffee with Kenobi. Oh, that's not the right one. Um, this week on Coffee with Kenobi, we did I Love You, I Know. The um, the Amy Rakow joined me last week to talk about her new book, the I Love You, I Know. Star Wars, I Love You, I Know. Let me get the actual logo here. Sorry about that. I thought I fixed that, but maybe I didn't. She uh, She was really fun and really engaging, and we talked a lot about her book and how she kind of narrowed down what topic she was going to have. Last week we did WandaVision. And then this week we had something really fun that we've been wanting to do for a while, which Dungeons and Dragons and how it works. So many of you have asked us, how do you play Dungeons and Dragons? How do you set up uh, your your schedule nights? We've been doing now now for almost three years. So we talked about how we create our characters, how the dice work in the game, and where we meet, how we set up, kind of the the physicality, whether we're playing remotely or in person, and it's going to be fun. Okay, let's see. We do have some questions here, which is great to see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daniel says, "I just finished your new book. Really well done. Well, thank you so much, Daniel. I really appreciate that so much. It was a great refresher. Read plus learned some things. Awesome. Now I need to sign. You know what, Daniel? I will love to sign that book for you. And once." celebration rolls around again when we're all together uh, i will definitely sign as many books as i can mason wants to know when we're going to do trivia well mason you are in luck buddy it's going to be next week it's always going to be the second monday of every month so next week is start with the return of star wars trivia so start practicing minta says i'm sure you've heard the rumors about jar jar was meant to be the main villain of the prequel trilogy uh really i did not i had not heard that i really had not heard that as you know i avoid spoilers i avoid speculation i avoid rumors like you wouldn't even imagine i'm like very jedi like it avoiding that so that's why i've not heard anything like that and i don't think that that's true i don't think that that's true but it's certainly an interesting thing i mean to happy to sign your book as well josh says he's finally getting the star wars book i was budgeting for galaxy's edge uh so stunning bucks light of the jedi and the high republic issues as well as star wars series but honestly it wasn't really digging light of the jedi planning on using that money to get the star wars book very excited well, Josh, I mean, you know, again, I don't have a glowing in blue behind me uh, for no reason. I mean, it's a shameless plug. 
but actually I'm not, it's it's a great book it was so much fun i had so much fun writing it with pablo and cole and it's cool i mean pablo and i have always been buddies but uh we certainly chat even more than we ever have because of the star wars book i think uh, well a lot of other reasons probably but it's really fun star wars book again written by myself pablo hidalgo and cole horton it is available now it was an amazon bestseller and it's got a lot of cool stuff in there there's some easter eggs in there that people haven't talked about yet so when people do look them over i'm excited about that a lot of the jedi was just mentioned the audiobook is terrific uh the book itself is fantastic i will say it's one of my more favorite star wars books and oh boy it's just uh i it's hard to say anything because i don't want to spoil anything about it but it's tremendous it's intense it's very exciting and it really opens up a lot about the lore of Star Wars. But that audiobook by Ping and Random House Audio, a proud sponsor of Coffee with Kenobi, we're very thrilled to work with them always. And they also have A Test of Courage by Justina Ireland. And then Claudia Gray's book will be coming out, I believe, tomorrow. And that's another good one as well. So you got a lot of great stuff to choose from, and you really can't go wrong listening to them on Ping and Random House Audio. Looks like we got a few more questions, so let me get to those. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aaron says, any top tips for podcasting star wars or just in general well aaron that's a that's a big question uh honestly the best the biggest thing i can tell you about podcasting right off the bat is to follow your gut and make a show that you are proud of that you like that you think you would like to listen to and of course there's a lot more stuff that goes into that and uh a lot of, actually that reminds me while we're talking about this there's been a lot of great stuff going on in the world of podcasting a lot of innovations and innovations in technology and there's so many to choose from if you really are serious about kind of starting your own brand whether it's a blog or a podcast or youtube be sure to go to danzymedia.com and i will be happy to help you take your first step into a larger world and help you really explore and walk you through the process uh wes says i just bought a copy of the star wars book it is an amazing book it is like a star wars textbook what was your favorite entry to write other than the kenobi one well wes thanks man uh, my besides the Kenobi one, I really liked writing about the Force, and I really liked writing about Force abilities. It was fun to write about Leia too. So there's a lot of good ones, but those those are the ones that really stand out because they're really, again, as I've said, to, when you teach something or write something, you have to learn about it in very different ways, and I, that's really really fun. It really helps you reflect because the act of writing it just helps you kind of compartmentalize it and explain it in a different way. So that's one of the things I really liked about it. But thank you so much, Wes. I appreciate that. He says, Pablo, Josh says, Pablo is awesome. Can't believe you made Darth Revan canon in a throwaway sentence in the visual guide. Most people don't even realize it. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, he says, looking forward to reading A Test of Courage. Justina Ireland is great. And yeah, it's a much shorter book than the other one, uh, but it's really cool. What do you think would be the best thing about Galaxy's Edge besides Rise of Resistance? The best thing to me about Galaxy's Edge is building your lightsaber at Savage Workshop. There's nothing compares to it. I mean, in a place full of wonder and amazing things, building that lightsaber is such a cool, cool experience. I mean, one of my favorite Star Wars things I've ever done. And I don't want to spoil it, but it's tremendous. Aaron, hey, man, thanks, man. Happy to help uh, in any way I can and put you in the right direction. If you're thinking about starting a Star Wars podcast, that would be awesome. Let us know and be happy to promote it here for you on Coffee with Kenobi. Okay, so yeah, that's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks so much to everybody for joining us this week to share your top five favorite Ahsoka Tano moments. Remember, next week is going to be your top five favorite Anakin Skywalker moments. It's going to be a tough one, but you've got so much to choose from. But it's going to be fun to talk about, just like it was fun to talk about tonight, our top five favorite Ahsoka Tano moments. Again, be sure to join me next Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time to talk about your top five favorite Anakin Skywalker moments. Um, Dave, great chat. Thanks to people like you joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, vaccine equals Galaxy's Edge visit. There you go, Daniel. Uh, best of luck to you on that. I, we got our first one, so everybody's feeling good and looking forward to getting that second one and taking care of business. Yes. Wes says, my favorite aspect of Galaxy's Edge is a life-size falcon. There's nothing like seeing that in person. Well, you won't get an argument from me there. I absolutely love, love the Millennium Falcon. That's so great. Mary, have a great week for you. Ross, yeah, try to stay warm as well. It's pretty pretty cold out there. Looking forward to Thursday and Monday. Well, hey, man, thanks so much. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks again to all of you for joining us every week on Coffee with Kenobi, whether you're listening to the Facebook Live 
live video like you are now or the recaps on YouTube and Instagram, hearing the audio of it, or hearing the regular Coffee with Kenobi podcast. We are thrilled to have you and join you uh, to talk about some Star Wars. Aaron says, I'll to sleep now, 2.40 a.m. here. Oh, man, yeah, Aaron, definitely get some sleep. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much. Oh, so, Daniel, you're located in New England, so you're going to have some snow as well. Well, good luck. Stay warm, everybody. May the force be with all of you. And remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time.